kila wakati ambapo unaitwa kama mwananchi kuweza kuhusishwa katika mazungumzo ya sera za serikali especially sana sana kuhusiana na bajeti kumbuka mambo hayo tisa jambo la kwanza previous sailings stroke historical allocations stroke ongoing projects and the, the ceiling is just what you have on the, just below the roof <laughs> kiwango cha juu zaidi ambazo hauwezi pi pitisha serikali huwa inaendelea sasa so, zingine watu wanasema serikali haina mwanzo na haina mwisho <laughs> mambo tu ndio huwa yanabadilika wale wanafanya kazi kwa serikali wanabadilika sera zinabadilika lakini serikali iko pale wakati Turkana County Government ilikuja tulipofanya uchaguzi wa mwaka 2013 kuna mambo ambayo alikuwa anafanya before na, na national government na central government kupitia ofisi ya DC kupitia ofisi ya local authority ambayo ilikuwa hapa hayo mambo yalikuwa transferred to the county government na wakaendeleza kama ni wafanyikazi wakachukuliwa na waka wakaingia kwa county wakaendelea na kazi zao kwa hivyo kila wakati ambapo unafikiria bajeti ya mwaka ujao ambao tunaitwa tuchangie kumbuka ya kwamba kuna pesa ambazo zilikuwa zimetengwa kwa kila sek, kila sekta na kuna ile inaitwa ceiling ceiling ni ya kwamba kwa sekta A pesa ambazo zimetengwa ni bilioni hamsini mwaka uliopita kwa hivyo unapofikiria mwaka ujao auwezi anza kusema ah tuwapatie tu bilioni 30 kwa sababu hiyo bilioni hamsini kuna jambo ambalo ilikuwa ifanye. So ongoing project ni kumaanisha kwamba ni, ni, ni mradi ambao ulikuwa umeshaanzishwa haujamalizikia. Na kwa sababu miradi mingi ya serikali inafanywa na faces. Faces kumaanisha kwamba katika mwaka wa 1012 kwa 1016 sorry 1012 na 1216 1217 tutafanya face 1. Alafu 2017 2018 tutafanya phase 2. 2018 2019 tutafanya phase 3. So kuna hizo ongoing projects. Na lazima kwa nini ni muhimu kujua kuna ongoing projects? Ya kwamba lazima ongoing projects zikaweza kutengewa pesa. That's why it is important to always remember there are ongoing projects. The second one is what the government is proposing to give to those sectors. Every year The government has its own proposal of how much money they should give to each of the sectors. So you want to know. So based on what the government gave to these sectors last year, how much are they proposing to give in the next year? Because remember we are preparing for the next budget. So before parliament approves it, the national government, the different ministries and the national treasury, they will have their own proposals. So you want to know what that proposal is? So like now, right now there is the big four. Wangapo umesikia juu ya big four? I'm sure hakuna mtu hajasikia big four. Now, what exactly does it mean in terms of actual allocations to the sectors where those big four actually fall? So you need to see what the government proposal is because that will give you an idea of to say does that look adequate to achieve the big four? Does it seem too much? but for you to be able to make that decision and that calculation then you need to know what the government is proposing sawa sawa so the second important factor to keep in mind is what the government proposals are so as you will go to look <coughs> at the sectors that i mentioned then you will need to have an idea of how much is the government proposing to give to education how much are they proposing to give to infrastructure then what do we as a group think about that number 4 sorry number 3 number 3 yes 3 National and County Functions. National and County Functions. Hiyo sana tulipoanza. Ya kwamba bajeti inafuatilia yale majukumu ambayo yametolewa na katiba kwa the different levels of government. Ukikuta ya kwamba National Government imetenga pesa kiasi kikubwa sana ya hospitali. Hiyo ni afya ambayo iko katika responsibility ya county governments. Of course najua kuna pesa ambazo zinatengwa lakini ni za direct utilization uh, kama ile ya matano healthcare. So lazima tukumbuke ya kwamba kuna national functions and county functions. Ndipo tunafikiria ya kwamba the reason kwa sababu ya kwamba hizi pesa zimeweza kutengwa kwa hii level ni kwa sababu uh, kuna zile functions ambazo ni za national government na kuna zile functions ambazo ni za county government.
priorities. Priorities ni nini kwa Kiswahili? Kipaumbele. Kipaumbele, eh. Hey, Aya, tueleze. What do you think priorities are? Aya ni baadhi ya ya miradi ambayo jamii ama serikali inaipangia iwe ni ni muhimu in ingawaje wako na mahitaji mengi but yako yale matatu ambayo umeona kwanza haya ni muhimu sana ambayo itawasaidia ingawaje oh, unaweza kuona priorities mingi but you have the the best one ambao unaona itakusaidia ambayo inahitaji iwafikie jamii nzima kuna mahitaji mengi 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 sana lakini kuna yale mambo ambayo serikali imesema haya ndio mambo ambayo tungependa kupea kipaumbele. Hayo ndio mambo ambayo tungependa kushughulikia sana. Priorities ni kumaanisha kwamba kuna mambo haya mengi lakini kila mwaka kuna yale mambo ambayo serikali inafanya ni priority. Changing priorities over time. What does that mean? Pengine wakati ambao umeipangia kuna kitu kingine ambacho kiliingilia kati na ukaona kuwa lazima kwanza ipatiwe kipaumbele kuliko hiyo. Changing priorities over time ni ya kwamba kuna mambo ambayo kama vile ameelezea tuchukue kwa kwa mfano health ama afya afya wakati serikali kuu ya kitaifa ilianza kuna ile walisema ni free maternity na mambo yale mengine lakini over time kuna jambo ambalo limejitokeza na limeanza kuwa a very key priority ama napewa kipaumbele sana katika sekta ya, ya, ya afya maneno ya kansa kwa sababu karibu kila mtu ameweza kuwa kuwa affected. Hiyo ni mambo ambayo miaka tano, miaka kumi, ago hatukuwa tumepea kipaumbele hivyo. Lakini sasa imekuwa ni jambo ambalo ni la muhimu sana. Na vile mambo yanaelekea unapata ya kwamba lazima kukuwe na karibu kila hospitali sasa ikuwe na mashini za dialysis, cancer screening na mambo yale mengine. So that's an emerging priority, you know, a changing priority over time. Bado iko katika sekta ya, ya afya. Lakini sasa imepewa kipaumbele zaidi. The sixth factor which is very important is that we have to consider what the emerging issues are in the sectors that we will be looking at. Now, emerging sectors are things that we had not planned for, but they've come up and now we have to budget for them. A good example is CBAs. Nani wamesikia CBAs last year? CBAs kila mahali, CBA ya nurses, CBA ya doctors, CBA ya lecturers, collective bargaining agreement, a agreement between an employer and employees. And most of the time it's about pay. So you are sitting down with your employer and saying, over the next five years, tunataka ukuna tuongeza mshara by 7% every year. So when you are thinking about your sectors, you need to be aware of such emerging issues. Because what happens is, is that that 7% has to be allocated money for. If we pass a new law, sometimes we pass new laws that require that we have to fund them. Okay? So those kind of emerging issues are more informed by our general idea of what has been happening. It is important to keep in mind, have there been droughts? What does that mean for agriculture? Have there been... Ilikuwa naituwa nini ile wom ilikula maindi? Ame wom. Right? What does that AMIWOM mean for our fertilizer subsidy program? What does it mean for the food security? What does it mean for cases where the government has actually to give food relief? Okay? So emerging issues is something important to keep in mind as well. Sector performance. Why is that useful when you are distributing money among sectors in government? Performance of sectors gives you an idea about how well they use their money. Are they able to absorb all their money? Uli wapatia 200 million, wameza kutumia, ama inarudi treasury. Sindio? Si wakati mungine munasikia pesa inarudi treasury. Iyo ni pesa ingetumua maali ingine, but instead, mutu alikalia, haa kutumia, and now, that money goes back and it's not used. So, understanding performance ya kila sector, inakusaidia kujua how much money do we give them for them to be effective. Ni pesa kiasi gani tunatakiwa kuwapatia ndio waweze kutumia vizuri. Uh -huh. Source of funding. What do you think is why why is source of funding important? The, the, the government has to know where it will get the money to fund a particular project. Will it be so will it be paid by the donors? Will it be uh, a loan or will it be from the taxes? So the source of funding must be known. 
So source of funding is important. Why source of funding is critical for something more? That when you're thinking about a sector, so as we are discussing here, you could be seeing a sector has got a lot of money and you, you are like, oh, no, we should propose to government to move this money, this 500 billion from this sector to there, to another sector that has got little, uh, little money. Little do you know that maybe 300 billion out of that money is money coming from a loan that is restricted. So it's money purely for education, or it's money purely for healthcare, or it's money purely for, you know, uh, and even in healthcare, it's for maternal healthcare. So you cannot even move it to immunization, you know, uh, or even move it to HIV and AIDS, uh, however much that is a critical. So source of funding, government gets its money through different sources, and it is important to know to check where is this money coming from. We need to ask ourselves as citizens when we are making any discussion around sectors on, uh, I want somebody to read for us. Our approaches to development. Into bracket? Trade-offs. Trade-offs. If I can, I can explain it in the simplest term. Niakwamba, it is not that you can do A without B. You need both A and B. But it's a question of how much, what should you emphasize more? <laughs> what should you give up? For instance, if you have education on one hand and you have infrastructure on the other hand, you cannot say we only need education, we don't need infrastructure. <laughs> or you cannot say we just need infrastructure, we don't need education. You need both. So it's a question of where do you put more emphasis? And that is informed by two things. One, your approach, whether it is on human capital versus physical capital. It's simply an approach or a philosophy of development. What do you think this means? Our approach to development. We need to think about what is our approach to development. What do you think human capital versus physical capital is all about? Human capital is uh, the capacity of the person. The, the people. It's the skills of the people. You, how do you build the skills of the people? You invest in education, healthcare, you know, water, all those things that build the human person. But what about physical capital? You just said it. Infrastructure. So you, you, physical capital has to do with the necessary infrastructure. ICT, roads, airports, you know? So the question is, where, what is your approach? Some people are fully convinced that the best approach is investing in human capital. Others are convinced it is physical capital. What you need is put an infrastructure that is enabling people will develop themselves. They will have jobs and they will educate themselves. They will do all those things. Where should you, where do you lean more? If you lean more towards human capital, you'll find yourself wanting to, in, to, to allocate more resources to all things that develop the human capital side of it, the manpower side of it. If you are more towards the physical capital, you find allocating more money for bridges, for roads, for infrastructure, for ICT, and all these things that enable development. Physical security has to do with security of persons and property. So, and who helps us to do that? Who helps us ensure that kind of security? Uh -huh. Who helps us? Want to hear some other perspective? When your property is stolen, who do you go to? <laughs> the chief, the police, and all those. In other words, it is a security apparatus. If the police cannot help you, and you know who stole things from you, through the police you go to court. <laughs> so, if your approach is about physical security, you will emphasize on making sure that there is a security of persons, security of property, and all those things. What about social security? So social security has to do with not just the physical security of property, but it has to do basically with the safeguarding of well-being. What do I mean by this? Ya kwamba, kama wewe, wewe ni mze, ama wewe ni mtoto, ama wewe ni mlemavu, you have an opportunity to make, to, to live a decent life. And what do we do with this? For instance, 
we all contribute to NSSF. Ndiyo, ma, ndiyo siku ile tutazeeka or private pension. Ndiyo siku ile tutazeeka kutakuwa na pesa ya kutu ya kutusaidia. But we also do more than that. We also invest in our families and our clans and the like so that they provide us a social safety net. <laughs> Today ukua na shida, si watu wanaitana, wanachangiana, wanasaidiana. It's all part of social security. It's about the values. It's about the culture. You know, it's about all these things that have to do with our well-being. Tunachanga pesa kwa chamaz na hii mambo yote ili kuhakikisha kwamba in case of anything we are well taken taken care of.